Uh oh. Starting to pick up some speed. That's not good. Hey, hey, back up. Don't try to get close to me like that. Well, I guess the best laid plans have them sprinting down the hill. How are my large white farm dogs doing, huh? Hi. Can you say hello? Hi. Hi. Yes, we have got a very big day here on the farm today because really this is the final step before our farm becomes essentially its winter farm. You know, I've talked about this before, but like there's kind of two modes for our farm. There's a summer version of the farm and there's a winter version of the farm. And I have stuff like this going on for the winter version of the farm, which I'll explain later in this video. Okay, Toby, let's greet your birds. Good morning, birds! Yes, while it's about 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside, it's about 35 or 40 degrees inside the hoop coop. And now it's time for our favorite thing. Release the quackin'! <laughs> So now this orange hose that you guys see here actually connects over to my hydrant. It drains by itself because in the winter months when you pour water through the hose and there's like still standing water inside the hose, it's gonna freeze. But the way that this hose goes up and then runs down, it should allow the hose to drain by itself. And so I ran it yesterday and I wanted to test it this morning and see if this premise works. Like the dog water here, it's frozen solid. Yeah, I'm gonna have to break out your heated bucket soon too. All I have to do is take this end of the hose and connect it in to the hydrant and then flick the switch. Let's see if it does it. Oh, hey, would you look at that? It works. So now I gotta just figure out a way that I can flip this switch and it'll fill up all four of my buckets. And then watering birds in the winter will take me no time at all. I always love watching the feeding frenzy in the morning chaos here. And by the way, there have been some changes with the weird chicken claw, as you'll now see. So yeah, several chickens have joined the weird chicken flock. Basically, I think they like the comfort of the egg loo house. Ooh, and apparently that's where my chickens have been laying their eggs. I think the birds have been sleeping inside the nesting box so they poop all over the eggs. I'll clean the rest of that out later today, but first I gotta deal with the cattle situation. <laughs> Yeah, I've been smashing a couple pumpkins a day that helps supplement my chicken feed in a big way. Now the way this watering setup is going to work is all I have to do is just connect the hose and it's letting all the water just drain right out. And then just to ensure that nothing goes wrong, I'll typically just run like this real quick. And that'll make sure my hose does not freeze overnight and I'll be ready to go next thing tomorrow morning. How are my heifer girls doing? Bonnie, McMurray, and Belinda Carlisle both moved from the up top pasture down to this lower pasture. I'll probably still leave them in here for a couple of days. This will give them a chance to just graze down this area and they will eventually rejoin the herd. The plan will be to actually have them move in with all the females. Just as soon as I separate out Macho Man and Joey Ramone, I don't want Macho Man trying to breed with them over this winter and I wanna wait until next spring or I guess next June before I introduce the girls to Macho Man directly. But did you hear that Belinda? You're gonna be able to rejoin your family real soon. Now the the most likely way for this to all go wrong is when my cattle are coming down the hill, for them to give up on the path that I create for them, for them to want to sprint out to this pasture here, which is actually my neighbor's pasture. And so this is the one spot where I don't actually have permanent fence because my neighbor and I want to be able to kind of go back and forth across this line. And so it's going to be a little bit dicey here. Now, usually for my cattle, I don't do a double strand of fencing wire for them, but because of the risks, I am. And because of my calf baby B, who tends to play by her own rules, I think I'm actually gonna be extra safe and do three strands. What do you think, girls? Is that sufficient coverage that I got here? Now inside this area is where they're gonna go. As you can see, there's plenty of grass and I've also opened a couple of bales of hay for them. So there's plenty of food for them to eat. I also actually left these branches in there. It gives them something to scratch on, which they tend to like. But who knows, maybe later this winter I'll mount a brush onto that post again. Down along this side is where I usually work my cattle. So for example, if I need to sort them or separate them, or if I have a vet coming to do veterinary care, which I'm still struggling with, I'm actually able to bring them in through there. Underneath the high drive of the barn is a place where they can go if they want to get out of the weather, but I try to give them as much open space as possible. Eventually I'm going to separate 
my steer and my bull onto that side and the ladies are going to be on this side but i don't think i'm going to bother doing that today because i just want to give them a chance to get acclimated to this space before i try to make even more changes that's also why bonnie and belinda are going to stay out in pasture for at least a few more days too so that i can do this in steps and stages probably the biggest lesson i've ever learned about working with cattle has been to just be patient back when i first got my cattle i was always in such a rush to like make the cattle do what i wanted to do versus sitting back and trying to create situations where they'd be motivated to do what they want to do. And so taking my time while working with the cattle has been a major lesson. So my cattle have been in this upper paddock all summer. And so this is where they've been grazing the entire time. And this is actually where they're set up right now. I've created a lane that runs pretty much all the way through here and they're gonna to need to go in. Where they're actually gonna end up is actually in my barn over here. Last year, they spent all summer inside this area which is where my heifers are living. And so when I had to move them last year, I just had to go through this gate down here into here, so it was nice and easy. This year, it's gonna be a much longer move down into the barn area. And to be quite honest, I'm a bit scared about them potentially breaking out, particularly in this area, if they break out, they can run out here. Obviously, we have the road all along here. And so there are some risks in this cattle move. I've created a back gate here, and then I've created a border and boundary down here. I have basically what's a permanent fence right along this tree line right here but i've actually created a temporary fence along this side right over here because again if they escape into my neighbor's pasture which is full of lush green grass they could easily run down to the street i also create a cutoff lane here and there's a hard fence so that they don't go down this way so that's less of a risk. But if they get momentum running down this hill, they could easily charge through and blow through this barrier and then I'd have another problem on my hands. I'm gonna want them to carefully and slowly move down this hill to ultimately go into this space here, which is where the winter yard is. I genuinely hope things don't go haywire here. I don't know if you can see it, but there are some hungry cattle up there and they look ready to move down. Well, here goes nothing. Let's get ready for the move. So yesterday was one of the rare days where I actually didn't move their paddocks and they have been out here and have not received fresh grass in more than 24 hours. And so you can tell by just looking at them and how they're lined up here at the fence line, they are ready for me to open that gate and then they'll be able to continue on to fresh grass. Like I said earlier, my plan will be to take our time and move at the cattle's pace, not at the pace of my anxiety. All right, Amanda, clear out. And we've got everybody in this temporary paddock here. And as you can see, they're all just happily munching away. I'm gonna close up this gate. And now there is officially no turning back. Eat it up, girls. This is the last fresh grass of the year. Hey, macho stud. How's it going, pal? I think you put in the work this summer. I'm very proud of you. Now this seems to be exactly what I'm hoping for, where they're just sort of slowly munching grass. The herd is kind of collectively gonna start to move downhill. Like I said, this is where I wanna be patient. What you thinking, Abby Dog? I know you wanted to participate, but your chaotic good can sometimes be too chaotic for my good. By the way, the Abby Dog Chaotic Good t-shirt is gonna be still around for a little bit longer, so check it out. It could make for a great holiday gift. Baby B, please don't knock over my camera, girl. That's the good camera. If you're gonna knock over a camera, go knock over a GoPro. So now that the cattle have exited the main paddock and everybody's pretty chill, I'm gonna start to use some treats to encourage them to continue migrating down. Come here, macho man. Oh yeah, you like that. Everybody just keep moving further down. We're heading east here. Come on, Macho Man, the entire rest of your herd is over there. Come here, pal. Let's go, buddy. Don't get left behind. Uh-oh. Starting to pick up some speed. That's not good. Hey, hey, back up. Don't try to get close to me like that. Well, I guess the best laid plans have them sprinting down the hill. Abby, Abby, stop it. Abby, come. No, 
Abby. Now, one thing I don't want to have happen is to have them come back up the hill. I'm gonna be setting some lines to prevent that. Glad I have a handy carabiner here. Excuse me, baby B, you're heading in the wrong direction, girl. Okay, go back down the hill, come on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't go that way. Everybody down the hill, let's go. Everybody keeps moving down the hill. Okay, good job, guys. Keep moving down. Come on, girls, let's go, keep going. Hey, would you look at that? <laughs> they all made it in nice and easily. Nothing like a well-made cattle plant, huh? Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 macho man, what you doing, buddy? We got everybody else over here, and they're snacking on the good grasses that I have planted over in the yard. Macho Man! Unfortunately, it looks like Macho Man just got sidetracked by the ladies. Reliable with the ladies! Come on, Randy, come on. Look, I got more treats for you. That's what you like. Here, I'll get you another one right over there. Let you explore that space. That'll hold for temporary. All right, it looks like everybody has settled back into their winter home. Now this is another important step. I gotta disconnect my water lines. Probably tomorrow I'm gonna do a big farm cleanup where I come around and just pick up all the random stuff that's still up here and blow out the water lines and clear them so that they don't freeze and crack over the winter. But for right now, I'll just take this with me. Well, as you can see here, Cattle are pigging out on the hay, getting used to their winter quarters again. And all in all, this is feeling like a successful mission. If you're curious about what it looks like when one of the calves is born in this winter yard, I will flash back to this video up here and you should check it out. Thanks for watching everybody.